Hello again, I guess you're back if you're watching this video, second uh, video of the 23rd day. Uh, still prehistoric, pre prehistoric uh, uh, period, uh, uh, coming up through time, uh, and I said that earlier in the week that I hoped by the end of the week we would be civilized. Well, here's where we become civilized. Uh, at what point did humans become civilized? Um, well, uh, there is a theory about it. I'll deal with that in a moment. But civilized, by that I don't mean kind, gentle, nice to each other. That's not what I mean. Civilized has to do with cities. In a way, I'm not civilized that way, in a way, because I, I, I live out on a farm. I don't like to even go to town. I, I don't like to live in a city. But, but humans, in general, like to do that. And there came a point where they began to live in cities. And to do that, they had to obey rules to get them to get along with each other. Why did they do that? Uh, Hunter-gatherers didn't have to do that. Uh, I suppose farmers, uh, nah, if, if all the conditions were perfect, uh, farmers maybe wouldn't have to gather in groups larger than an uh, extended family or a tribe. But eventually humans began to form cities and set up laws and create civilization. <clears throat> now granted that here out in the countryside I live with the benefits of civilization. I don't fear that I'm going to be attacked by marauding outlaws, at least not now. Uh, all right, anyway, one theory, and there's others. I'm not so sure anyone knows for certain why humans get civilized. This is the theory that I like. It's called the hydraulic theory. Hydraulic means having to do with water, in this case. The hydraulic theory of the development of civilization. I stumbled upon it in my uh, adulthood. I didn't learn about it in school at all. Wittfogel, I think, is the guy who proposed it. I'm not sure. I might have that name wrong. I don't know. Uh, you could check. But anyway, it goes like this. That if you take agriculture and you put it together with irrigation, then you've got civilization. Agriculture plus irrigation civilization. When you domesticated plants, unlike animals, you had to stay still, because the animals could go with you, they could travel, they could wander. Uh, uh, a whole subject that I forgot to mention is transhumance. Another thing I learned in my, in my uh, adulthood, uh, if you'd ever get a chance to see a video called Grass, it, it's a silent movie, uh, uh, I forgot to mention that, but anyway, it, it deals with transhumance, uh, humans moving uh, with their uh, uh, with their animals, and, and it is unbelievable. Uh, black and white, silent movie grass. But anyway, uh, when you have plants, you've got to stay there. You've got to take care of them for their growing season, maybe three months, maybe four. So you had permanent settlements. That still isn't civilization. But when you need irrigation, if there's enough rainfall, that's fine. You're okay. But if you need irrigation, well, then you've got to start to get organized. And so many parts of the world had wonderful soil, lots of sunlight, a great place to grow plants, but they didn't have enough rainfall, even though there was water in the river nearby or up in the mountains. And when that happened, humans agreed that they would work together to bring that water out of the river or out of the creeks and bring that water to their fields. Well, your field might be 10 miles away from the river, and how are you going to get your water from 10 miles away, how are you going to keep somebody that's only one mile away from taking all your water? Well, you're going to have to obey rules. You're going to have to, otherwise it's not worth it for you to work on building a dam and diverting the water. Uh, so they developed rules. Uh, and that seems to have worked. I mean, uh, uh, Mesopotamia, it's called, also called the Fertile Crescent, the Tigris and Euphrates River. They're often taught about. Um, that, 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 is probably the sometimes called the cradle of civilization. That's what happened there. It happened in Egypt with the Nile River. It happened in China. And independently, it's, it's not as if the one place learned it from another. It just seemed to happen. Uh, in India, uh, it happened. Uh, in Mexico, it happened. Peru, uh, I already told you I get pretty excited about Peru. Uh, uh, it, 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 that was uh, that was the civilization uh, they built Machu Picchu. They were not uh, literate yet, so it was prehistoric, but it was a civilization, and the, and they did this. As a matter of fact, I'm jumping the gun a little bit, 
But Peru is the first place I ever personally saw what you'll see in Hunza in Pakistan if you will go there. Oh, I, I forgot to write down how you can go to Hunza. Well, that's sort of part of the field trip business of this week. I'll, I'll write it in the next video. But anyway, in these places, p humans organized themselves, decided that they would all obey the rules in order to be able to get water to their fields. So there's one theory of the development of civilization. I like that theory. I'm sure there are others. I have one more video uh, th uh, today, uh, and it has to do with one of the reasons that there is no field trip this week. So I hope you come back one more time today.